Hey YouTubers out there, this is Jerry at the Movies. Um, about three days ago, this is September 28th of 2012, um, I always like to put the, mention the date because that reminds me of when I actually discuss something, I don't know. Uh, anyhow, um, I discussed uh, John Carpenter's Halloween. Um, I didn't go into a full in-depth review, but basically I described the power of that film and why it works so well and how it leaves heart to the imagination, in addition to the fact that uh, the 35th anniversary is coming up on Halloween, uh, technically 2013 and 2012, but that's okay. Um, but I wanted to mention something that's on YouTube that really caught my attention. Uh, I guess I heard about this and I never really got around to looking at this. Uh, somebody on YouTube posted an audience reaction to a screening of John Carpenter's Halloween back in 1979 uh, when it was re-released. Um, and I was curious and so I watched this. They uh, may have recorded other scenes from the film uh, on a tape recorder, so you just hear the audience. What he did is he took the climax of the film, which the audience was responding to, and added the clips, and they're just a touch out of sync, but that's okay. You get the picture with the audience reaction. And that was, I gotta tell you, this viewer that put this up, this is a historic piece of heard, uh, well, obviously, uh, audio footage, it's historic. And the reason I mention this is because of this. After Halloween was released in 1978, filmmakers started jumping on the wagon and saying, you know, we gotta try and do something just like this. Okay, so that's, we all know all the slasher films that came out, the most popular being, of course, Friday the 13th. What started to happen, and interestingly enough, this is what happened with Pulp Fiction, um, in a different sense, is that the filmmakers thought that the reason Halloween worked was because of the killings, when in fact that was only a part of it. In fact, there aren't that many killings in that picture anyway. There isn't a whole lot of violence. And that's what they took away from it. And that's what they thought people were reacting to, that they were, you know, jumping at, at that, uh, the scares, you know. Oh, there's the killer stabbing somebody, you know, that this was scary. Which, technically, it's not, unless, of course, you care about the victims. Now, what did happen was that Jason Voorhees... Uh, Freddy Krueger also, even though I really like Freddy Krueger, <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Most of these slasher villains, the more popular ones, let's say, uh, and not so popular, the audience was taught to uh, to identify with the killer. So this way, the killer was somehow the anti-hero, which is hardly what John Carpenter's film did. So, in a sense, we were meant to identify the killer, not the victim. So the victims remain anonymous. They don't have much personality. I mean, there are exceptions to this rule. Don't get me wrong. But in general, that's what happened. That's what kind of killed the slasher genre for a while, anyway. Is that these movies just thought the gore was the, the point. Accentuate the gore, accentuate the killings. Don't relate to the victims. And, of course, if they're smoking pot and having sex, they're going to die. They're going to be skewered. So that's really what, what became of that genre. Now, there are exceptions prior to Halloween. Black Christmas from 1974 by Bob Clark. Uh, but that's prior to Halloween. Um, Post-Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street was one of the better ones. But that was a whole different type of film anyway. Um... And even long before Halloween, if you think about it, what really sired the slasher genre was Psycho, Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, uh, where we were kind of meant to identify with Norman Bates. Uh, but that's because we didn't know that he, you know, well, now everyone knows, but the first time you see that picture 
if if you don't know the secret to that film, you don't know, you know, who he really is. Now, I mentioned Pulp Fiction because this also happened too. Tarantino's film was misjudged by other filmmakers who also jumped on the bandwagon and started making films like Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. Uh, you know, there are a bunch of these where, again, they thought that the gore accentuate the gore because that's what people find funny. Whereas Tarantino's film did it in such a different manner. It wasn't about that. It was about the characters, once again. Um, anyway, what's interesting about the audience reaction to this picture on YouTube is that the audience is screaming. They see Michael Myers, he gets up, he's walking right behind Laurie Strode, right at the climax of the film. Donald Pleasance arrives, he starts shooting, and a lot of the people were starting to applaud, like, oh, finally, thank God, we're getting rid of this boogeyman. Um, and then uh, there was shock. Like, oh, he's not dead. You know. But that's what got me, is that I, it would be interesting to hear audience reaction for the rest of that film, because more than likely they identified with the victims. Not with the killer. See, the killer was devoid of all humanity. And since gore is not the main issue of that film, we're meant to identify as victims, which were brilliant, brilliantly performed by all three of those actresses. Um, so, that's why it's historic. Because it's a reminder of what audiences used to care about in horror films. The victims. The ones are being perpetrated against by an evil, not the evil itself. Um, and that is the key, once again, to the success of Halloween. So I, I thank this viewer greatly for doing this, because I think for those listening, they will be reminded, like, oh, I see. Uh, and it's just a reminder. A reminder of what these films used to be about, as opposed to what they became. Um, so kudos to this guy for doing that. And I just wanted to mention that, um, putting it on my favorites. It's really a remarkable piece of footage with this audio, uh, put in place of this audience reaction back in 1979 to John Carpenter's Halloween. So with that, this is Jerry to Movies with your host Jerry Saravia, signing off.